Hello and welcome to another ASP.NET Core coding tutorial from Round the Code. Now today we're going to be looking at Azure DevOps and how we actually integrate a repo into Azure DevOps. Come the end of this video, you'll be able to learn how to add an ASP.NET Core Web API and a Blazor Web Assembly application into Azure DevOps. Now this starts a brand new series where basically we're going to be integrating a Blazor WebAssembly application with an API and a SQL Server database into Azure. Now for more ASP.NET Core coding tutorials, visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash roundthecode, and follow me on Twitter, it's at roundthecode. Now let's go ahead and create our applications into Azure DevOps. So we're gonna go ahead and create our Azure DevOps organization. So I've gone to azure.microsoft.com and let's click on this start free button here. So we can click continue. We need to give it an underscore name, uh, a forward slash name, round the code to, and we need to fill out the form down here. So that's going ahead and creating our organization for us. It takes a few moments, there we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a project. So we've got two applications that we wanna use in Azure DevOps. We've got roundthecode.crud API, that's our web API. And we've also got our Blazor WebAssembly project, which is roundthecode.blazorwasm. So first things first, we're gonna set up the CRUD API. So we're gonna call it roundthecode crud API private and create the project that's good so now we're going to go into repos I'm going to switch to the default repo and we're going to use SSH authentication so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to generate an SSH key locally and basically paste it into Azure DevOps so the two can communicate with each other first things that we need to do is we need to basically add our remote repository into our local repository. So I'm gonna be using git bash for this. So we're just basically gonna be running these git commands in git bash. So if I go ahead and copy that and paste it in here, like so. So that's now added our remote origin into our local repository. What I need to do is first of all, I need to generate the actual key. So it's gonna generate a private key and a public key. It's the public key that we basically need to copy into Azure DevOps. So the way you can do that is you can run this command here, ssh hyphen key gen, and you just need to pass in a parameter of T and set it to RSA like so. So you can just basically mark these all as empty like so. And now what we need to do now is we need to get the actual public key. So we run this tool called putty keygen operator and what we need to do is we need to find the rd hyphen rsa so if you're using git bash it's always going to create it as id hyphen rsa or it should do anyways obviously you might have different tokens depending on what programs if you're using git kraken or source tree you'll probably you'll have different public and private keys for that so let's just click on there so it says it's successfully imported. We now need to copy the public key into Azure DevOps. So we can go ahead and copy that. So to do that, we go into manage SSH keys, add a new key, we call it git bash. It doesn't matter what name you call it. And then we just copy our public key in like so, all done. So now that the authentication is set up between the local and Azure DevOps, all we can do now is we'll basically run this git command down here. So we push our local repository into Azure DevOps. So we just run that and that goes up our files. So hopefully if we refresh now, yeah, there we go. We've got our repository in there. We've got our CRUD API in there and the job's a good one. Now, Next thing we need to do is we also need to set up the Blazor WebAssembly project. So what we need to do with that is we're gonna create an actual new project. So if we go up to Azure DevOps up here and we're gonna create a new project and we're gonna call this one round the code dot blazor wasm and we're gonna create it as private again. Okay, 
there we go so once again we're just going to go into repos and we're going to add the remote origin and we're going to add it into our local blazor wasm project so once again using git bash i can use the same ssh key so we don't need to generate a new one for this so just going to go ahead and run that command like so and then we're going to go ahead and push push it all up there so once again we run the git push and there we go so hopefully as you can see we've got all our files up there in later videos we're going to be setting up our blazor WebAssembly application in azure and also we're going to be looking at continuous integration as well but in our next video we're going to be basically setting up the servers for our database and our web api that's coming up in part two so you should check it out